Carl Corbin joining us this morning, and we're talking about uh, the railroad display at uh, model railroad display. We better be clear about that. They don't have enough room at the Twin Falls uh, County Fairgrounds for uh, actual scale. Uh, that, <laughs> Prototype. Yeah. <laughs> so what they do is they have uh, the people, probably the most popular exhibit, and I think it has been in the past at the fairgrounds, is, uh, is the model railroad exhibit. Uh, and it's all new. If you remember, it, they had a big makeover and a new building. And, and uh, uh, so now, I guess they would say if it was, this was the cereal business, new and improved. Yeah. That's a good way to put that. Yeah. I uh, wanted to mention we're at six minutes after nine o'clock. It's 35. And Bill Colley with you, too, on News Radio 1310, KLIX and News Radio 1310.com. Uh, first of all, by the way, I know you're an Orioles fan, but uh, I got to show off my hat. Oh, yeah. I, I, I was rooting for the. For the Nationals. <laughs> well, that's because, of course, you're from the eastern shore of the Chesapeake Bay originally. Yeah. And then uh, when the Dodgers got in, I'm an anti-Dodger fan. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we got to mention as well that that's when you developed your, your, your love of railroading because uh, in your hometown, which I'm familiar with, there's a railroad that goes right down the spine of that Delmarva Peninsula. Yeah. And uh, in it, you know, one time that was a huge booming area because of the, the rail lines going through there. So ever since you've been a kid, you've been involved in this. And I, I had called it a hobby in the last half hour, but it really is, I'd call it more of a passion. Hobby seems almost too simple a word. Yeah. And then uh, once uh, I was growing up, uh, the Pennsylvania Railroad ran right down through through our town. And uh, I'm old enough to uh, remember sitting on the bank of the and watching the steam engines come in and uh, watch them down at the water tower taking on water. And, and then they go right, right past me and go down. And, and uh, then about three quarters of an hour later, they come, come and roaring back this way. And I'd be still sitting there waiting for them to go by. And I, I really become a. Uh, a railroad fan. Not only the prototype. Uh, I like to follow the prototypes as well. Uh, especially I'm following the 4014, the big boy that's been uh, traveling is heading back to uh, Cheyenne right now, and uh, I'm waiting and anxiously waiting when it comes through Shoshone, so I can yeah. see it there. <laughs> Some of my coworkers, the last time it passed through, went out and took a look at it. Uh, it's never been through. Never here. been through. Okay. Uh, this this one uh, uh, in 2012, they took in, uh, removed it from Compton, uh, the uh, Museum of the Rail Giants. That's out on the West Coast. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. L.A. And they towed it with other engine back to Cheyenne, and. Five years of taking it all apart, oh, rebuilding think, it. Yeah, I remember you telling me about this now. Yeah. I had it confused with another engine that came through. Yeah. Uh, 844 has been through uh, many times. 3985 has been through. I, I got pictures of both of those. Um, and so 844, uh, 8414 uh, is, uh, it made its maiden uh, trip to Ogden, for the 150-year anniversary of the Golden Spike. So now it went back, and it made another little excursion around uh, Chicago, Illinois, and all that area. And then it took off from uh, Shine again and came to the West Coast. And they had a real big thing in, in L.A. It was uh, UP's payback for them to let them have the engine back again. Now, every year you do this at the fairgrounds as part of a Christmas show. Right. We have an open house. It's going to be December the 7th, starting at noon till 4 o'clock in the afternoon. And all our layouts uh, inside will all be running, and we're going to have a, a small uh, G-scale inside. Uh, don't think the weather would be permissible to do it <laughs> in December. Uh, outside, so we will be doing that uh, inside, and we'll have free re refreshments for for everybody to partake of, and everybody will be there explaining what what their particular scale is. Uh, we'll have a uh, HO running a full blast, uh, the Lionel running, and we also have the N scale running. 
Now, for people who, who have not yet seen the new facility, this is going to, you were telling me beforehand, it's easy to spot now. Yes, it's very easy to spot now. If you, uh, uh, a couple months ago, they moved the caboose from where it was at. Uh, they've been wanting to move that caboose for many, many years. And now what they're doing is building a live stage uh, dressing room and stuff. So they moved the caboose to in front of the uh, Model Railroad building you, so you can't miss it. And so uh, kind of there's a nice picture there. How do you move a caboose? Uh, <laughs> they had a great big crane that lifted the caboose off the trucks and put it on a flat boy. And then they lifted the trucks off and put them on another truck and uh, took them out, drove them over there, and then they unloaded the trucks and then got them set. So then when they lift, then put the caboose right on top. I was going to say, it's not something that you can do easily. No. Yeah. <laughs> and it's pretty expensive, too. Yeah, you wouldn't want to move it a long distance. Uh, <laughs> the short distance at the fairgrounds is one thing, but if you had to move it 20 miles, I don't think anyone could really afford to do that yeah. in this day and age. Because I think somebody, uh, I think the, the price tag of moving it right there on the fairgrounds is over $10,000. So it, it, it was a, a pretty spendy uh, operation. But uh, our open house, and we're also encouraging anybody that's interested, uh, think about joining us. Uh, the beauty of our layouts there is you don't have to have a layout at home. All you have to do is uh, have trains come and run and kind of take part in, uh, in uh, modification of, of the layouts as we, we, as we go along. And uh, uh, that's the ver real beauty of it, so you don't have to have one at home. You know, I think about this, though. Uh, people... They, they sometimes may look at what you've got there as far as the exhibits, and they think, I don't know that I could do that anytime soon. But you don't have to, you don't have to do it all at once. A lot of people who, who've been doing this for years, it took them years to build the the, 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 the diorama, the community that they've got around it, and, and put the rest of the, because you're talking a, a wire mesh and a lot of paint and everything else that goes into this. So it's one of those things, it's a project you work on sometimes, can take years to finish. Sometimes you never really finish. Yes. <laughs> so you, you get to a point where you say, oh, I, I want to change that. So so it, it's, a, it's a hobby that uh, uh, allows you to do many different uh, things, uh, you know, electrical, electronics. You can uh, create buildings from scratch. You can do all kinds of different things and scenery and create uh, little small dioramas on the layout itself. So if you look at the layout, you have this little section here, uh, like on the end scale, we have a great big area there, which is a paper mill. It gives you whole thing of the paper mill, except one thing. It doesn't provide the odor. <laughs> so so that so that's a fun thing. And then we got another one where we're working on building a, a uh, county fair, and with fairgrounds. And then we got another one, a camping area. So you got a lot more room now. Yeah, well, this is still, the end scale pretty much hasn't changed a whole lot other than modifications and, and, and upgrades. Uh, the end scale layout was built in modules to start with. So when with times to move out of the old building, we were able to separate the modules and move the modules. And so then when the new building got, we were able to put the modules back together. So that's where you'll see the end scale is a little further ahead than anybody else because uh, we were able to put it back together and, and do that. What's the public reaction to the new building? Everybody really likes the building. It's more open. Uh, if everybody remembers, it had uh, a wall and there it kind of separated the Front end scale. Back. Yeah. Yeah. So now there's no separation. It's all completely through. Uh, it's... Uh, easy for anybody gets in uh both entrances is uh handicap uh, accessible so you can just uh if you're in your uh wheelchairs you just roll right on in so you don't have any steps whatsoever so it makes it real easy to get in and out i gotta remind uh, people uh, tuning in uh, we're talking to carl corbin and it's called magic valley 
model Mo- railroaders. Rare right. And uh, this is coming up on December 7th, which is a Saturday at the Twin Falls County Fairgrounds between noon and four, right? And uh, we're at 915 on KLIX. We've got 34. Bill Colley with you, too. And I, I want to tell people that the first time I did an interview outside the radio station after coming to work at, at this radio station in, at the end of 2014, I didn't go out and do any interviews on the street, though, as far as like getting material for the show until the fair, just before the fair opened up in 2015. The very first person I interviewed was you because I walked into the exhibit and I said, hey, can I talk to you about it? And Carl said, sure. <laughs> and we did about a 20-minute interview. Uh, and I remember I recorded it on a cell phone, not not knowing if it would work or not, but it came out, sounded great when I actually turned around and put it on the air. But that's the thing. All of you have such a, and I called it a passion earlier, you love to talk about it. You know, it's not just not just doing the hard work on it, but you love to talk about it too. Yeah, because we like to get as many people interested as uh as possible, uh, one of the things that we've changed and in, in going to do starting in January, the second sun, uh, second Saturday of each month, starting in January, we're going to have a like a semi-open house where people can bring their own trains and put them on our layout and, and see them run. So trying to instill the interest in, in hey, look, come and be part of us. Well, as you're a scout leader too, so... Obviously, you bring the scouts out a lot uh, so that they can see it as well. Yeah. Plus, I'm the only uh, railroad merit badger uh, a counselor in uh, in the whole Magia Valley. So you've got uh, you've got scouts that are pursuing that now too. A uh, few. They, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, just like everything else. You got to take their video games away. You, yeah, uh, that's one of the biggest. Uh, that's the difference between when I grew up and uh, and a time now. When we grew up uh, way back in the fifties, uh, fifties and sixties, uh, there wasn't a whole lot, and so we had to make our own hobbies and do our own things. And and, and most of the time, it all started from uh, just trying different things. And and over the years, yeah, you get to be uh, uh, pretty precise in what you do, and 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 that's something about one thing about if you join was. You're not expected to do what we do. Uh, that's what we're there for, to help you learn and train and so you can understand what it was all about. you got a minute to go, and you're on to another radio station, but uh, you've mentioned in the past, too, that a lot of women are getting involved because they have that dexterity yeah. to work with a lot of the smaller uh, smaller displays. Yeah, that, that's correct. Uh, we had a lady that, uh, uh, she, that they moved uh, out of state, but uh, she made a little hobo village, and uh, I gave her a, a train car, and so, and, and she she made that, and then she made little tiny tents uh, for the, our campground. So uh, it it's it, it's very important that the uh, the it's not just a a, a male hobby; it, it's everybody's hobby. There's just as many women in, interested, and with their uh, artistic available. Uh, it really improves uh, a lot. Well, I want to thank Carl Corbin for coming by today. And uh, my computer is doing some strange things. It's telling me over here I've got a bad gateway. It just flashed on the screen. I don't know what that's about. I think someone's trying to write me via the app and maybe ask a question. But I'll pass that along to you sure. after the show, and maybe I can then answer it for him later on. Uh, we want to mention uh, that's coming up again December 7th at the fairgrounds from noon until 4. That's a Saturday, December 7th. And we've got a short break ahead. Bill Colley with you too on News Radio 1310, KLIX, and News Radio 1310.com. It's 35 at 920.